When we're in Server Manager and Windows Server 2019, we see under the dashboard this option to connect this server to cloud services. So when we click on that, it opens up into Microsoft.com. And you can sign in, and then we can download the Azure Portal app. I've signed in, and if you don't have an account yet, you'll have the option to create one at that time. So now that we're in the Azure website, we can click on Portal. And now we have the option to either continue on to the Azure Portal website or to download the Azure Portal app. Let's choose the Portal app. And we see that the Portal app is being downloaded and we can choose to run it or to save it. I'd like to save these things simply because I can go back and choose to re-download or uninstall later on. So I'm going to choose to save it to my Downloads folder. And now it's just about done. I'll click on View Downloads, and it's running the security scan. And now it's done. I can either go into File Explorer or just click Run here. And this is a little bit faster, so I'll just click Run. And we see that the file's executing and the installation has begun. You'll get prompted to log in once again, and then the app is going to launch. And there it is. So the nice thing about this app, instead of just using the portal website is, I don't have to do this through a web browser because a lot of people don't like the clunkiness of the web browser experience. All I'll have to do is just launch the app. So if I minimize this web browser and everything else, you can see that this is more of a user-friendly type of app that I can get to simply by going to my Start menu and clicking on Azure Portal. And it takes me right to this box. So let's just do that one more time. We'll close that. Click on the Start button and click on Azure Portal. And if you choose the Keep Me Signed In option, then you won't get prompted every time you restart that app. And now I'm into Azure Services, and you can see that uh, I've got some recent resources that I've already done. I can create a resource, create a virtual machine, uh, whatever it is that I would like, storage, app services, Kubernetes, that kind of thing. So let's navigate a little bit. If we go up to the top, we see that there is a cloud shell we can click on. And at the very bottom, it's going to open up. And we have the option for Bash or PowerShell. I'll just click on PowerShell. And in order to keep going, you're going to have to click on Create Storage. And then that way you'll have uh, access to a hard drive, although it's a virtual hard drive in the cloud, and you'll need to pay as you go. So you'll need to be prepared to uh, pay for that. And the prices are a little bit tricky. It's hard to say exactly how much things cost. Uh, because it depends not only on the amount of storage that you get, but whether or not you have it replicated to other parts of the uh, country or the world, and also uh, you know, how much you use it. Next thing we can do is click on notifications. So if you have any notifications here reminding you about something, you know, such as paying your bill, <laughs> you can uh, click on that. Uh, you also have the settings option. And settings will just change the way things look if you'd like. You can choose a theme. Uh, let's see, we'll choose that theme. There we go. Definitely change things up a little bit. You can also choose high contrast, such as black or white. You can also change your default view. Do you want it to be the dashboard, or do you want it to be home? And you've got language and region settings as well. It also has a help and feedback section. So just for an example, let's click on Create a Resource just to see how it looks. So uh, this is how it now looks. We've got the popular resources on this right-hand side, and we've got all of the resources on the left-hand side. So if, for instance, you wanted to uh, create a storage account, you can click on Storage. You can also see a tutorial on that. And you can set up the type of storage you would like, and then the billing will start happen. You also have this option here to go forward or back, which is really nice as well. So if you're really deep into things, it used to show layered uh, different windows. That was really confusing. And now you just have a back and forth button. You can also click on the hamburger at the top and just click Home or any one of the other resources. So that's how you install and navigate the Azure app. And we did that in Windows Server 2019.